Greetings, everybody. Happy, well, the calendar's been changed, but today's supposed to be the Sabbath day. Uh, it's May 6th, 2022. This is going to be part seven of doctrine, the doctrine of Christ. Now, if you want to know who Jesus is from the King James Bible, on my playlist, I have Who is Jesus? You know, some people say he's just an angel. Others say he's the brother of Satan. Others say he's the son of God. Others say he's just a mere man. Uh, some say he's a pro just a prophet. Uh, you know, I'm going to go a little bit into this. Not much, but I mean, if you want to do an in-depth study, uh, well, not in-depth, but enough to figure it out. Um about who is Jesus, I've got a Bible study. I'll try to remember to do the link. If anybody's interested, maybe I'll post it in community. Um, Tube's been getting real bad about comments, deleting. I, I see notifications that somebody leaves a comment and then I go to the community to, you know, say something with them. It's not there course some of my posts disappear too i've had videos removed uh memes removed you know <laughs> sometimes comments on my own channel get deleted you figure that one out yeah certain keywords and uh yeah usually it starts with a j and and uh it just rhymes with uh you know news you know like the newscasters television news you know uh, yeah, rhymes with news. Starts with a uh, a J. So, yeah, what can I tell you? But uh, if you're a Mormon, uh, Jesus is just he's a son of God, but he's just one of many. I mean, after all, uh, all the angels are just when God the Father. Uh, got all those women pregnant and they popped out children and they became angels and uh satan and jesus are brothers to a mormon can you imagine on judgment day you're gonna you're gonna you, jesus is is uh, you're gonna tell jesus to his face that as a Mormon, you believe that Jesus was Satan's brother? Uh, my King James Bible teaches that Jesus created all the angels. They're not brothers. Uh, I'm sorry. You know, well, I'm not sorry. I'm just, yeah, I'm being sarcastic. So, you know, the Mormons teach that uh, they tell their members, oh, don't be a Masonic Lodge member. Oh, they're evil. You know, secret society. Bad, bad, bad. Don't go there. And reason being is that when you go to the, Masa uh, the uh, Mormon temple and you've been to a Masonic Lodge, you see the same symbols on the walls. The same things. And you start, you know, you'll start asking questions. Hey, wait a minute. What does this symbol mean? We had this in the lodge. In the lodge, it meant this. What does it mean here in the Mormon, you know? So they don't want you to see the connection. Uh, if you're a Jehovah's Witness, Jesus is just, you know, Michael the Archangel. And the, um, of course, you know, they said that the world was going to end by 1975-76 um give you a little hint it didn't the world jesus didn't come back in 75 76 well they'll say well yeah jesus came back but it was secretly you know but the jo the the king james bible says that every eye would see him uh my eye missed that so either the king james bible's wrong or the jw's are wrong and i'll let you decide which is which um and the oh and by the way the mormons will tell you oh yeah we use the king james bible 
but it's full of errors. So, you know, that's why the angel moron I, and they spell it that way, M-O-R-O-N, moron, and then they put an I on the end. Uh, yeah, he, he, you know, the, the King James Bible was, Satan messed it all up, you know, so moron I had to come along and give Joseph Smith the golden tablets so that he could do the Book of Mormons or the Book of Morons, as I call it. So, you know, and where are these golden tablets? Uh, we don't know, but Joseph Smith said he had them, you know, so, yeah. Well, the jo so, yeah, they'll tell you, yeah, we use the King James, but we don't believe it. Yeah, so no thank you for the Mormons. And when I was in Bible college, uh, we had to do a class on, we had a choice, either the Mormons or the Jehovah's Witnesses. I picked the Jehovah's Witnesses because there's more of them down here in Florida. Uh, if you went to out in the West, uh, there's more Mormons. Maybe. You know, Utah is full of Mormons. Um, but the, uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses actually... I think for the first 50 or so years of their existence, um, they used the King James Bible as their Bible. Believe it or not, they did. And they actually said, well, we believe this. But then people started reading the King James Bible and noticing, oh, wait a minute, you guys say Jesus is Michael the Archangel, but the Bible teaches that Jesus created everything. And the Bible says that God created everything. Wait a minute. That means Jesus has to be God. What? Wait a minute. How, where, how's that work? So the Jehovah's Witnesses figured, well, we got to get rid of this King James Bible. So we're going to put, uh, put out our own Bible, uh, pre-twisted to their own satanic doctrines. Uh, and we're going to call it the New World Translation, or what I call it, the New World Order Translation. I think they put it out in 1964. I'm not sure. But it was in the uh, early to mid-60s. Around the same time they took prayer out of the uh, public schools. Thank you, uh, so-called Supreme Court. Bunch of guys wearing black dresses, you know. Um, I'd hate to be them on Judgment Day, but um, I've got my own sins that I, yeah, I, I got enough of my own. I don't need theirs to worry about theirs. Um, but yeah, they um, put out their own Bible that changes enough things that you can't prove that Jesus is God in the flesh. You can't do it. 1 Timothy 3.16 uh, changed. Uh, what else? I think it was John 1.1. 1, 1. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. So, you know, the Jehovah's Witness Bible will say, well, yeah, there's, you got one God, one God, one God. But you got one God, and then Jesus is a God. So one plus a God, doesn't that mean mean two? No, 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 it means one. Jesus is a little God. And if you can follow that logic, you can be a Watchtower devotee uh, also. I can't figure that one out. So... You know, and that's what, one of the reasons why the uh, Jehovah's Witnesses put out so much literature. Because you're so busy reading their literature, you don't have time for the Bible. Personally, I always tell them, why don't you throw away their literature and read the Bible? Oh, we can't use the King James. We got our New World Order translation. I mean, the New World translation. Yeah, I had it right the first time, so... Is Jesus Michael the Archangel? I don't think so. I know so. I don't have to think so, but, you know, so, you know, that's why 
you have people that fight the King James so much. If you want to know what Bible to use, find out what Bible the world hates the most and use that. And I'll guarantee you there is probably no more than a handful of churches in San Francisco that use the King James Bible and they're not pro, uh, how does that go? The um, LBGT, whatever, B, uh, whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, that's how that works. So, and then you got the mega churches, you know, the Benny Hens and whatever. Uh, and and you know you know why people join these churches? The reason they join it is because the preachers preach that well you know if you if you tithe you know you're ten percent God's gonna bless you ten times so you give us a thousand dollars and God's gonna bless you ten thousand dollars praise of Jesus you know. Are they giving to help the Lord or are they giving out of greed? Good question, huh? All right, let's go to uh, Mark chapter 10, verse 17. And when he, Jesus, was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, um, by the way, that word master and rabbi are interchangeable. That's why Jesus said, call no man a uh, rabbi. And what do they all call themselves? Yeah. Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. Now, if you listen to the Jehovah's Witnesses, they'll tell you, yeah, Jesus is telling them, uh, don't call me good, because there's only one that's good, and that's God, and I'm not God. I'm a God, but I'm not the God. You know, this is the kind of idiocy that you get when you join these Jehovah Witness people type thingy. Jesus isn't telling him not to call him good. He's asking him, why are you calling me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Are you acknowledging that I'm God? That's, that's what Jesus is asking him. You know, is Jesus just a mere man? You know, to the, to the um, um, Islam, to the Muslims, Jesus is just one of many prophets. Matter of fact, Muhammad is even a greater prophet than Jesus. But did Jesus raise the dead, heal the sick, give sight to the blind? No. No. In Psalms chapter 2 and verse 7, I know I've come, come across this a couple times. Uh, this is a fairly recent verse that I discovered. Well, I didn't discover it, but that came to my mind. I should say, um, I will declare the decree, the Lord, the Lord hath said unto me, thou art my son, the Lord hath said unto me, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee, begotten means of the same essence, God has a son of the same essence. You talk to a Mormon, well, you know, God the Father just uh, did his little thing with Mary and then, you know, out pops Jesus nine months later or whatever. And I'm not trying to be crude, but that is essentially what they believe. Really, they do. You know, it's insane. And, you know, I got enough things in my past I got a lot of skeletons in my closet, a lot of dead men's bones. Uh, but I, that's one thing I don't have to, you know. No, I, I don't have that one. 
So God has a begotten Son. Jesus is called the only begotten Son. And in Hebrews 5.5, 5, uh, So also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest. Why do we need a high priest? We need a high priest to make sacrifice to, to the God so that we're atoned, our sins are atoned for, to God. And what does atoned mean? At one meant. Atonement. At one meant with God. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. You know, even the, the, the temple soldiers, when the high priests wanted to have Christ brought to them so they could try him and kill him, the, the temple soldiers said, Never a man spake like this man. They knew something was special about Jesus. Unbelievable. In John 1.18, No man hath seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. And everybody knows John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So, yeah, there's a big difference between a begotten son from God, the Father. I mean, in Job 38, angels are called sons of God. In Luke chapter 3, Adam is called uh, the son of God. But Jesus is the only begotten son of God. There's a big difference. Not just a world of difference, a universe of difference. And, you know, if Jesus is just a mere man, he's infected with sin nature like all of us are the day we're born. We're fallen human flesh. But Jesus was not infected with that like we are. That's how come he can be the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. The sinless lamb. The book of Hebrews is one incredible book. I mean, like I've said a few times, if uh, when you get to the book of Leviticus, after you finish Leviticus, you should read Hebrews. Because Hebrews is basically the New Testament equivalent, well, fulfillment, I should say, of uh, Leviticus. Hebrews 1.5, For unto which of the angels said he, the Lord, for unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee? And the answer is none of them. And again, I will be, un, uh, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. You know, there's a big difference between a son of God and the only begotten son of God. Big difference. 1 John 4, 9. In this was manifest the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Doctrine, people. Doctrine. In 1 John 5, 1, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. John 1, 14, And the Word was made flesh. Revelation clearly, Jesus says that well, Revelation says, the book of Revelation says that Jesus is the Word of God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, and the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. 
John 3.18. He that believeth on him. Him who? Jesus. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Because he hath not believed in the name, the name of the only begotten Son of God. Now what is that name? It doesn't start with a Y. No. That name is Jesus. You know, there's a reason why they hate the name Jesus. There's a reason why they hate the King James. You know, you know how many revivals there's been in European countries because of, of the King James Bible? A lot. Has there ever been a revival because of the NIV? No, no, no. Absolutely not. All right, let's go to John chapter 7, verse 11. Then the Jews sought him, Jesus, they're looking for Jesus, sought him at the feast and said, where is he? And there was much murmuring among the people concerning him. For some said, he is a good man. Others said, nay, but he deceiveth the people. Howbeit no man spake openly of him for fear of the you-know-who. The you-know-whos, yeah. I hate to even say the, that word. I mean, with this AI censorship stuff going on, you know? Verse 14. Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? How does this guy know all this stuff? He never went to our Bible cemetery. You know, did he go to rabbinical school? No, he didn't. He was a carpenter. Where is he getting all this stuff? Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine, oh, there we go, doctrine, right? Doctrine. Who is Jesus? Doctrine is important. Who is Jesus? Is he an angel? Is he a mere man? Just a mere prophet? Is he God in the flesh? Who is Jesus? It's probably that is probably the most important question you could ever, or at least one of, if not the. Who is Jesus? Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine. This doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. Who sent him? God the Father sent his only begotten Son. That's who. That's who. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. You know, when Jesus healed people and everybody was amazed, Jesus didn't seek his own glory. Jesus even told people, don't, don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody I healed you. But they went into the city and told everybody anyways. And then he was thronged with crowds. My doctrine is not mine, but this, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, God the Father, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory. Yeah, Jesus' glory was hanging on that cross, right? Uh, some glory, huh? I know I wouldn't want that glory. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory, but he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Did not Moses give you the law? And yet none of you keepeth the law. Why go ye about to kill me? Hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Who killed Jesus? Yeah. 
I think it's pretty pretty plain and clear when you read the book. Uh, but how many people read the book? Now we're going to go to a, a place that they call church that's incorporated by the state that has a license to preach so that we can get our tax exemption, you know, and get our charter from the, the state. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, and we're going to preach that. Yeah, and then tell you that uh, somebody else killed Jesus. Then who actually did? Yeah. All right, let's go to uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. I mean, I could read the whole chapter, but, you know, this is probably going to be... I haven't even started t touching what Jesus has taught. I'm just laying the foundation here. Hebrews 4.12, for the word of God is quick. Uh, you know, it's alive. And that's what, when you read the word quick, it means alive. I mean, let's face it. Even a turtle and a snail are quick compared to the dead. You know, even a snail, real, you know, you think about it. A snail's a lot quicker than uh, something that's dead and now doesn't move. So, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Yeah, the word of God cuts both ways. It really does. You know, that's why the Lord condemns hypocrisy. And there was a group of people that taught the law and they were a bunch of hypocrites. And I'll be honest, there's times I'm a hypocrite too, you know. If there were ever was a perfect church here in, in, in the world and I joined, it wouldn't be perfect anymore. So, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder, dividing asunder of soul and spirit. See, uh, when people tell you, oh, Trinity, that's a false doctrine. That's that three-headed God thing, you know. No. Now, the Bible teaches there's a soul and a spirit. And the Word of God divides between the soul and the spirit. Plus, you have a body. And God said, let us make man in our image. Our image. And he wasn't talking to the angels. The Bible teaches that Jesus created everything. The Bible teaches that God created everything. You know, if you ever took algebra in high school, you know, A equals B and B equals C, that means A equals B equals C. God created everything. Jesus created everything. Jesus is God. It ain't that hard, people. It really isn't. So the, the word of God will divide, dividing asunder of soul and spirit. You got a soul, a spirit, and a body. The dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's scary. The Bible will tell you what the, uh, will discern what your thoughts and intents were. You know, uh, do you tithe to the mega church because you want to get a 10 times blessing? Is that what it's all about? Huh? Or do you give five bucks to the homeless guy on the street that's dirty and ragged, lost his job because of the company went overseas to China? You know, the Bible teaches treasures in heaven. Treasures in heaven, not treasures here on the earth. So, yeah. Dividing asunder soul and spirit of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. In other words, none of us can hide from the Lord. Not up in heaven, not on the earth, not under the earth. 
But all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. One day we're all going to have to do, we're going to have to deal with the Lord or the Lord's going to deal with us. Verse 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the, into the heavens. Did you know our great high priest went up into the heavens? Yeah. Jesus, the Son of God. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. And when they're talking about a profession, they're not talking about a career. You know, uh, you know, you when you profess something, you're saying something, acknowledging something. That's why they call college teachers professors, because they're professing knowledge, supposedly. But nowadays they profess... Uh, evolution and everything evil. So, seeing that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Jesus had no sin. Yet without sin. There's a reason why the virgin birth. There's a reason. That's why, you know, the King James says virgin birth. Some of the modern Bibles say young woman. You know, and I think I've mentioned it a few times before, but there was a girl that was five years old that got pregnant. You, you don't get much younger than that. Boy, if that had been my daughter, I would have hunted down the uh, the uh, sperm donor. And uh, he wouldn't have had any more uh, problems in this world. Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, I... Sheesh. Her name was uh, Melina, Melina? I forget. You can look it up. Google youngest mother to give birth. Uh, as of a few years ago, she was still alive. I think she was in, she was in South America. I think Peru. Yeah, yeah. So was Mary just a young girl, or was she a virgin that gave birth? Big difference, people. Big difference. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Jesus felt hunger. Jesus felt thirst. Jesus felt cold and heat and probably pain. He probably stepped on a cactus needle in his life, possibly. I don't know that for a fact, but I'm just saying. He was tempted all the same things that we were. And yet he remained sinless unto the day he was crucified. And if he wasn't, if, he, if sin, Jesus had sinned once, well, then we got to look for another. And the Jews will be happy to tell us uh, who the Messiah is. You know, their Messiah. Yeah, they'll be happy to tell us. Won't they? Oh, yeah. Verse 16. Let us, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. God wants us to be bold. Come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. You know, the Bible teaches in Psalms 103, verse 8, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. And a good thing for me, because I'm surprised he didn't kill me in high school. Psalms 145, and verse 8, The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. Oh, yeah. All right, let's go back to Mark. Mark chapter 10. 
Verse 17, And when he was gone forth into the way, Jesus, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Are you acknowledging that I am God? Uh, you better. Verse 19. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not. Honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, One thing thou lackest. Yeah, you know, there's one thing you lack. Go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven. Treasure in heaven. And come take up the cross and follow me. Good advice, right? What does Jesus teach? Take up your cross and follow him. Do you know in the book of Acts, people sold their possessions and distributed to the poor? Yeah, they did. Uh, really? They did? That is true communism, I guess you could say. That's the real deal. That's Marxism is not communism. Uh, the only true communism you have on the earth today is probably bees and ants. So, so, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, take up the cross, and follow me. And he, the, the guy that wants eternal life, and he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. Uh, wait a minute, you mean I got to sell my Mercedes and my Learjet and give to the poor? But, but what about my goosey shoes and my, my, uh, tuxedos and, oh man, I can't, you know, I love my Mercedes and my Learjet. And Jesus looked round about and saith unto his disciples, how hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? You see, where is your heart? Is your heart on the kingdom of God or is your heart on your Learjet and your Rolls Royce? I mean, I don't know. And the disciples were astonished at his words, but Jesus answereth again and saith unto them, Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches? They trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God. For it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. You ever tried threading a camel through the eye of a needle? Then, then for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. You know how they get around this? The modern Bible teachers, they teach that one of the gates in Jerusalem was called the Isle of the Needle. And, and to take a camel through the gate, you had to bend down your head a little bit, you know, just a little bit, and then you could make it through the Isle of the Needle with your camel. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think Jesus said what he meant and meant, means what he said. And they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? Who then can be saved? Good question. Great question. And Jesus looking upon them saith, With men it is impossible. That's right. You can keep all the laws until the cows come home. That ain't going to get you in heaven. Uh-uh. No. Uh-uh. With men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, 
I love Peter. I did an entire study on Peter, the life of Peter. He was, he's my favorite apostle. I guess because I could uh, relate to Peter. You know, I can't relate. I can't really relate to Paul. Paul was a scholar. I'm not. I'm not a scholar. I'm just some guy that's read the Bible a couple of times. That's it. Paul was a scholar. I wish I had half the education he did, but I don't. Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels, but he shall receive an hundredfold now in this time. Ah, see the, the mega churches teach that if you tithe, you get a ten times blessing. Jesus says you get a hundredfold. So if you give up your house for the gospel's sake, you're going to get a hundredfold, a hundred times. But he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with, with persecutions and in the world to come, eternal life. Yeah, in this world, you're going to get persecution. You know, the church the church needs persecution once in a while. That's the problem. The church hasn't been persecuted in the United States. Not really. Not really, but it's coming. Persecution is coming. People are just blind. Oh, we're not going to see persecution. God loves us. We're, we're going to fly out of here in the pre-trib rapture. We're going to fly away. Whee! God would never beat us. He's not a wife beater. Well, don't read your Bible. Listen to your pre-trib rapture pastor. He'll tell you everything you want to hear. And then when your neck's on that chopping block and they tell you to deny Jesus or die, you know, <laughs> it's going to be interesting. Yeah, all the ones that told us who the chosen people are. Yeah, I know who the chosen people are. Galatians 3.29, And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Those in Christ are the, the chosen people. I think so. Verse 31, but many that are first shall be last, and the last first. Oh, yeah. So what did Jesus teach? What kind of doctrines did Jesus teach? Well, let's go read Matthew 5. Uh, I think this is the Sermon on the Mount. I'm not sure. But it doesn't matter. Where, where was Jesus when he taught this? It doesn't matter. You know? Matthew 5, verse 1. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Do you know that the Bible teaches that Moses was very meek? Here it is. Moses was, was called of God to do all these things, and yet he was meek. When, when people opposed his leadership, Moses didn't get all puffed up and say, Lord's going to strike you down dead, you heretic. No. He was very meek. Was Moses perfect? No. Far from it, like me. Far from it. Far, far, far from it. But Moses was meek. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. 
Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Do we thirst after righteousness? What does the Bible say about thirsting after righteousness? Uh, let's go take a look. John chapter 4, verse 1. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. And he must needs go through Samaria. Now remember, uh, Samaria was where uh, the northern kingdom where they were divorced. Northern Israel. Jeremiah 3 and verse 8. God divorced Israel where the capital was Samaria. You know, King Ahab, Jezebel, does that ring a bell? Yeah. So, so he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son, Joseph. Now, who was, jo well, who was Jacob? Jacob had his name changed to Israel. Jacob had 12 sons, which were the 12 tribes, of which Joseph was just one of them. So he's going to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jacob had a well dug, or maybe he dug it himself. I don't know. And that well had been there for hundreds of years, if not Maybe, thou, I don't know, maybe, I don't know how many, I don't know how long. Probably uh, centuries, centuries. Uh, let's see. Now, Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, Jesus was weary. He was tired. Sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. Then cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, if thou knewest the gift of God, if you knew about the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou would have, wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Living water. Do you thirst after righteousness? Living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, Thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Listen to this, verse 12. Art thou greater than our father Jacob? Ah, oh, this Samaritan woman was a, was a child of Jacob. She was an Israelite. You'll never hear that taught in most churches. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst Water of righteous, you know, thirst of righteousness, right? But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. 
there you go. You know, the um, the ten the the ten northern tribes they call them the lost tribes of Israel. They're only lost to the churches. The churches have lost Israel. God the Father and Jesus hasn't lost Israel. Only the churches have. Shame, but that's the way it goes. And they want you to think the tares, the weeds, are Israel. So what is all this about uh, living water? I did a Bible study on that too. All right, let's go to John chapter 7, verse 31. And many of the people believed on him. On whom? Jesus. And many of the people believed on him and said, When Christ cometh, will he do more miracles than these which this man hath done? Good question. You know, the people knew, you know, they're like, when Christ comes, are they going to be able to do more miracles than what Jesus has been doing? The Pharisees heard that the people murmured such things concerning him. And the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers to take him. Then said Jesus unto them, Yet a little while am I with you, and then I go unto him that sent me. Where's Jesus going? Unto him that sent him. Who? God the Father. Ye shall seek me, and shall not find me. For where I am, thither ye cannot come. Yeah, you uh, people that deny Christ, where Jesus goes, you're not going to be able to follow. Uh, you're going to go to the other place. You know, when you get in an elevator, uh, yeah, you're going to the, down, the downstairs. You're going to the basement. Yeah. Jesus is going up to the top floor. You're going... Yeah, you get the idea. Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go? Where is he going to go? That we shall not find him. Will he go unto to the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? And of course, he's talking about northern divorced Israel here. Jeremiah 3.8 Jeremiah 31.31 31. You know, the woman in Samaria was divorced Israel. She was. She was a child of Jacob Israel. Nobody teaches that stuff anymore. Hardly. There's a few of us, but not many. So where is he going to go? Read Jeremiah 31, 31. I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. That's paraphrasing, but... You get the idea. What manner of saying is this? And he said, Ye shall seek me, and shall not find me, and where I am, thither ye cannot come. In the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, if any man thirst, thirst after what? Righteousness. Not our righteousness, his righteousness. Christ's righteousness. Christ is the only one that had righteousness. The only, the only one. The only one. If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit. What Spirit? The Holy Spirit, which they that believed on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Many of the people, therefore, when they heard the saying, said, Of a truth, this is the prophet. Yeah, well, to be a prophet, that's where Islam gets it all wrong. Yeah, Jesus is a prophet. But that's only the beginning. That's not the end. To them, it's the end. All right, let's go to 1 John chapter 5, 
Verse 1. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. Now we're going to take a look at the commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. Now let's take a look at those commandments real quick. What commandments? Ten commandments? Ah, I know what commandments. Matthew twenty-two thirty-six. 36. Yeah. I know I've beaten this horse into the ground, but we're going to beat it again. So someone came to Jesus and asked him, what was the most important commandment? Matthew twenty-two thirty-six. 36. He says, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And by the way, this is paraphrasing the Old Testament. Yeah. Everybody acts like the Old and New Testament are totally different. They're not. They're not totally different. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. If you love your neighbor, you're not going to kill him. You're not going to seduce his wife. You're not going to steal his cattle. You know, if he gets in trouble, his house burns down, maybe you'll give him a room to stay in until they rebuild. That's loving your neighbor. And, you know... And if you live next door to Satanists, well, move or, or take care of the problem. <laughs> yeah, like the early colonial people did when it came to the, uh, the natives. Yeah, they knew what to do with the heathens. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. You know, this is why I tell people, the Hebrew roots heretics, they don't believe the Bible. No, they really don't. Because if they believe the Bible, they would know those two commandments. No, we got to keep all ten commandments and the feast days and blah, blah, blah. Ash, yes. Got to keep the Sabbath. Where did Jesus say keep the Sabbath? No. Love the Lord and love thy neighbor. That's all the law and the prophets. That's it. 1 John 5.2 By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. For whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Remember when he died on the cross and the Roman soldier stuck a spear into his side. What came out? Water and blood. The blood of Jesus cleanseth us from all sin. And the water is likened unto the Holy Spirit. What happened when, when John the Baptist baptized Jesus? In the water of Jordan. The Spirit of God came down like a dove. Didn't it? Yes. The water is representative, you know, and when you get baptized, it, it's sort of like a ceremony of the of symbolizing the washing of sin from our fleshly body. But it has a spiritual application. 
Think about it. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit, the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. The Bible teaches you have a body, the Bible teaches you have a soul, the Bible teaches you have a spirit, and you are made in God's image. In Genesis 1, it's, uh, I think it's Genesis 1, 1 or 2, chapters 1 or 2, uh, let us make man in our image. And the idiots will tell you, oh, that's God talking to the angels. No! Let us make man in our image. God the Father was speaking to Jesus. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in the earth, the Spirit, and the water and the blood, and these three agree in one. This is why the King James Bible is so important, people. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar because he believed not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God hath given to us, eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Woo! Tell that to the synagogue. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that ye may believe on the name. And what name is that? Jesus. That ye may believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know that ye have eternal life. That ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence we have in him that if we ask anything According to his will, he heareth us. We're supposed to ask things in his will. You know, if you ask the Lord, if you have the gift of evangelism, and you ask the Lord to fill you with the Spirit for evangelism, he'll do it. You ask him for a Learjet, and he doesn't want you to have a Learjet, well, the answer will be no. And I get that answer a lot. No, not, not, not because I'm asking for a Learjet, but yeah. Yeah, it was re really funny. Somebody uh, once made a comment on my channel or email or something. I forget what, but uh, said, I'm a phony evangelist. And he knows I got a, 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 a mansion on the beach. <laughs> I said, please send me the address because I'd like to go visit this mansion on the beach. Please, what's the address? I'd like to go check this place out. You know, I'd probably sell it, but I couldn't even afford the, I couldn't even afford a, the, the, the insurance for a mansion on the beach. More or less the property taxes. So forget about it. So, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. If any man see his brother sin a sin, which is not unto death. You know, there's, there's sins and then there's abominations. Okay. If any man see his brother sin a sin, which is not unto death. He shall ask, and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. If somebody is into Satanism, I don't, do not believe that we're supposed to pray for them to be forgiven. 
That's a sin unto death. That's a capital crime. Verse 17, all unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. Why? Because of Christ's righteousness. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. And we know that the Son of God has come, and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. Oh, yeah. All right, let me uh, uh, do this. Let's see. Let's take a look at water a little bit more here. Revelation 7, 17. For the Lamb, Christ is the Lamb, which is in the midst of the throne, shall feed them. What's he going to feed them? You know, living bread, I guess. And he shall lead them unto living, living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Revelation, uh, let's see, 21, 6. And he said unto me, it is done. Who said he? Who is he? Jesus. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And I will give unto him that is a thirst, a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Revelation 22, verse 1. And he showed me a pure river of water of life. Jesus is the water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. Verse 17, Revelation 22, 17. And the Spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that is that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. Now remember, we were reading uh, in Matthew 5 about... Uh, he that was hungered and thirsting after righteousness. Well, here we go. Let's take a look at John chapter 6. Boy, what an incredible uh, thing that was. All right. Um, All right, John chapter 6, verse 44. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be taught of God. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. Not that any man hath seen the Father, save he which is of God, he hath seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, now this is Jesus speaking, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Jesus says, I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is, he's speaking of himself, this is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Let's go back to Matthew 5. Uh, do, 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 do. Verse 6. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Do you hunger and thirst for righteousness? For they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. 
Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Boy, there are not too many of them around, huh? For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice! Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt hath lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. You know, good works always follow salvation, true salvation, always. Contrary to what those that rail against lordship salvation say. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. Jesus was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. His blood washed away all the sins. He didn't do away with the law. He fulfilled the law. You know, you 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 buy you offer to buy some, uh, somebody's car and you say, I'll pay you so much money. You pay the money, the car's yours. You didn't do away with the, the, the offer. You fulfilled the offer. Verse 18. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Do you know what a jot and a tittle is? That's the uh, dotting of the I's and the crossing of the T's, basically. That would be the modern, that's the Bob translation. 19. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them. See, the Pharisees would teach, but they wouldn't do. Big difference. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of God. If your righteousness isn't better than those of the hypocrites, you're in deep doo-doo. Yeah. And how? where do you get this righteousness? Not from uh, keeping laws. No, 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 no. No. Christ. 21. Ye have heard that it was said of them by, of old time. Mark 5, 21. Thou, you have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. You know, the modern Bibles say that whosoever is angry with his brother shall be in danger of the judgment. They leave out without a cause. Do you know that Jesus got angry? Yeah. So essentially, the new modern Bibles make Jesus in, is in danger of the judgment because he was angry with his brother. But the Bible says angry without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, 
you know, you go to the temple and bring a gift to the altar to offer to God. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath ought against you uh, against thee, you know, is your brother angry at you for something? Jesus says, leave there thy gift before the altar and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. You know, getting reconciled to the family was more important than giving a gift to God in that order. I mean, I'm not saying don't give gift to God, but, you know, work it out with the family before you come offer something to God. Agree with thine adversary quickly, whilst thou art in the way with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee, thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Work things out with those that you have things against you. Right? Verily I say unto thee, thou shalt by no means come out thence until thou hast paid the uttermost farthing. You're not going to get out of prison until you pay that last penny. Oh, and by the way, did you know Australia was a, uh, a prison colony originally? A debtor's prison. People borrowed money that they couldn't pay back and they were thrown into prison. So what did the crown figure to do? Hey, uh, let's, uh, we found this new land area. Let's send them all there and then they can build a civilization and then we can tax it. <laughs> Taxes. Oh, yeah. You know, the empire, right? Yeah. How come when I think about the British Empire, I think about Star Wars, the empire, the evil empire? Not much different if you ask me, but... Um, verse 27. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. And I think just about every guy alive is guilty of this. Jesus just didn't make, you know, the law. I mean, he made it even harder just looking at a good looking woman the uh, guy's in big trouble i mean i know i've been guilty 29 if and if thy right eye offend thee pluck it out and cast it from thee for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell and if thy right hand offend thee cut it off and cast it from thee for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. It hath been said, Whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. But I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced committeth adultery. Oh boy. This is a can of worms. Uh, I tell you what, when I was growing up in the early 60s, when I was a little runt, it was rare for people to get divorced. It was rare. Um, I did weddings. I performed weddings for a number of years. And the... When the state issued a marriage license, it listed the number of times the husband, the groom and the bride had been divorced. Well, how many times they'd been married. There was one groom and wife, uh, bride. Between the two of them, they'd had seven marriages. Seven. They were only like maybe in their mid-30s. Maybe, you know, they might have been close to 40. Seven. Seven. One of them I had like four and the other had three. And I was looking at that going, boy, this is, I wonder how long this one's going to last. Horrible. The Lord's going to have to sort that one out. Uh, not me, that's for sure. Wow. Verse 33. Again, you have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shall perform unto the Lord thine oaths. 
You make a vow to the Lord, you should keep it. And I'm guilty of not doing this too. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king, neither shalt thou swear by the head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. You know, when you, when you go to a court of law, supposedly, and they ask you to swear on a Bible, you shouldn't do it. You know? Hey, let the lawyers and the, and the judges and the politicians swear that they're not going to lie. Let them do it. Police can get up. Do you know police can lie to you legally? Yeah. Yeah, we got five witnesses that got you at the scene of the uh, crime. They can lie legally. Well, their law. They're, they're the world's law. You know, thou shall not lie, thou shall not steal. You know why they don't post the Ten Commandments in a courthouse? Because with the lawyers and the judges, it's a uh, hostile work environment. Yeah. Thank you, uh, George Carlin. Verse 37. But let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay. When you tell somebody, yes, I'll do something, do it. When you tell them, no, don't do it. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. Ye've heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. And that doesn't mean letting assault you to kill you. You ever had a woman slap you in the face? Well, give her the other cheek too. I don't know if I've ever had a woman slap me. Oh, I take that back. Never mind. We don't want to go there. And if any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Don't go just one, go two. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. You know, that's one of the reasons why when I see homeless people on the street, it's hard for me to, you know, not give them a few bucks. You know, hey, if they want to go buy beer with it, fine. But hopefully they'll buy a burger instead. But you know how it is. You have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. This is hating our enemy. Jesus is not telling you to hate to hate those. Uh, uh, well, he's not telling you to, to love those that hate the Lord. That's a totally different, uh-uh. I did a Bible study on that. You have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. Sorry, I'm not going to pray for Satanists. No. Well, maybe for their destruction. But, yeah. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans, the tax collectors, the IRS agents, do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. You know, Jesus didn't just make the law easier. He actually made the law harder. You know, you look at your neighbor's wife and she's a hottie, fox, whatever, you know. Uh, and you're like, whoa, dude, I wish, ooh, you know, just to look at her, you're in trouble. Big trouble. 
And girls, don't you dare try to tell me that women aren't guilty of the same thing. Because I worked with a guy that was a former football player, and he was built, and all the married women would tongues would be hanging out when uh, every time he'd come into the room. Yeah, I mean they. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he. Uh, yeah, I was slightly jealous of him. I I say that sarcastically, but uh, yeah. Yeah, the same girls that wouldn't have anything to do with me, but uh, yeah, they they liked him. So, but I gotta admit, guys are uh, we're like a nine out of ten, whereas the women are about a four or five out of ten. So, when it comes to looking, so yeah, Jesus made the law harder. That's the thing. So, doctrine of Christ. I guess this is going to be seven. Part 7, Part uh, 7A. There'll be a 7B, I guess, because I barely even touched the surface on this. So, Alrighty. Uh, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.